Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I want to do a question and answer series from my last collection of videos, and there was three of them in this collection, and it was about how to build a lead screw, and I took it on as a different way of making a lead screw by starting out with some pre-made parts, fitting those to my application. And there were some just great, great questions and comments during this series that I want to share with you and also answer some of those questions that I didn't do a good job of answering while I did the videos. So if you remember, the very first video, I took a piece of all thread, Acme all thread, and what I did is I turned down the end, slipped over a new sleeve, soldered it into place, and then turned down for the final dimensions I need. Well, some of the questions were asked of, when I fit the new sleeve on, could I have done it other ways? And I want to address those questions. I soldered it into place because solder is a great way of holding steel against steel. It's actually a fantastic way of doing it. And I wanted to show you guys about that because I've never seen anybody do a video about that and I just thought it was a great solution. I could have glued it into place, I could have done a press fit, but I chose the soldering because I felt that it was the best way to solve this. So when I soldered it into position, my biggest concern was would it warp or twist the all thread? And it didn't. It worked out well. Now the type of solder, I was asked by Let's see, Dick Damon, what kind of solder did I use? And to be honest, I didn't use anything fancy. I just used plumbing solder. Now, one of the things is you didn't get to see on the video because I just kind of edited it out. It took a good four minutes to get both parts heated up to where the solder would do what it needs to do. I didn't use silver solder, and the reason I didn't use that is silver solder, well, there's different levels of silver solder. They start out at about 1100 degrees before the silver solder actually melts. And I was afraid with that much heat that I was going to have definitely some sort of warping. And I also don't want to put that kind of heat into my metal lathe. I think that could cause some problems maybe later. So just normal plumbing solder was a solution for that. Here was another great question from Nordu DK. I hope I pronounced that right. Would a shrink fit work as well? And what he's talking about, and several other people asked about this, was could I have taken this sleeve, turned it undersized by a couple thousandths, heated it up, put it on, and when it cooled, shrink and tighten up around that? And the answer is yes. I don't know how well it would hold in this situation. Somebody else asked me, actually a good friend of mine, Jeff, he asked, why couldn't I have just press fitted that on? The reason I didn't want to press fit is, usually I press fit you around, you want to be about a, a thousandth of an inch under to press fit. I think to get this to hold, I would have had to have been around three thousandths. Well, putting that much pressure down to try to fit two pieces of metal together, I was afraid of some sort of bending or warping and causing me problems later. You could also glue it in, but because of the action of the handle going back and forth, I'm afraid over time that glue would give up, give up its bond. The second video I did was I had the lead nut, and I needed to mill out the threads to put new threads in it. I had a great question from Greg Corney. First of all, he starts out, dumb question. Don't worry, it's not a dumb question, it's actually a really good one. Why not clamp the nut on the ground surface against the fixed jaw and two one, two, three blocks on the flats, putting no pressure on the bore to distort it? So what he wants to do is basically take two blocks and press it into place and clamp it. Now, the reason I didn't do that is well, there's a couple reasons. One is I was trying to show how important it is to clamp. And I like to clamp things simply. I was working with cast iron. Now, cast iron is incredibly hard, but it doesn't put a lot of stress on the cutter when cutting it because of the way the chips come off. If, if you notice, 
they come off on little tiny chips, not big shavings. So the stress is not as great. So the way I was working with that, I was just cleaning out the threads to make room for new threads. So there wasn't a lot of stress on it. So the way I clamped it was just fine. Now let's say I had to bore that out of that part with a big drill bit that would have been a lot of twisting force on that and then I would have definitely come in with the one two three blocks and clamped it in. A suggestion I would make on that because castings are variable, they're not very consistent. If you saw in that video how I milled the sides down to get more flat and parallel clamping surface, well I do the same thing with this, I would just mill the flats to make these blocks fit into place. Another challenge with going in with the one, two, three blocks is you have to fit them into the vise, fit the part, and you got these three things you're trying to juggle. And this one isn't a complicated one, but other ones are where there's always something moving or sliding. And let's just say my nice, charming personality gets adjusted to something completely different when things don't work the way I want. So I do try to keep things simple, but one, two, three blocks is a valid way of doing this. Here's another question I really, really like. I thought it was a very intelligent question. Muskade Smith, if you are using Acme thread, why not split the nut on one side and use a pinch bolt to keep the tolerance tolerable as the thread wears? Great question. The reason I didn't do that is I actually came up with some different ideas of how I could take up the backlash in that screw. And everything I kind of worked out was going to be kind of complicated and not work as well as I would like. And it was going to be a lot more time to do that. And when I really look at a surface grinder, backlash is really not a problem with that particular screw or that handle. So I decided just to, you know, keep it simple. If later on it's a problem, I'll probably take your suggestion. But also, Muscade Smith had another great, great comment. Why are some lead screw nuts made of brass and others not? Well, this is a great, great question. When you have two materials that are similar, okay, like steel on steel, if you try to take a steel shaft and put a steel bearing on it, it doesn't last very long. And that's because the two surfaces are basically the identical hardness. And when they're rotating, rotating inside each other, they start to mar and gall each other because they're fighting for dominance, basically. It's kind of like two dogs. They fight for dominance, okay? And one has to win. If they don't win, they both die. Well, that's why you end up going in with brass or something of a dissimilar metal. So what happens is the screw can go in and out, and if there's any sort of binding or galling, the harder material breaks through that and basically helps seat into the brass, okay? And makes it last a lot longer, which seems kind of odd, but that's the reason you do it. Now, what I ended up going with is the Acme thread I went with is just a mild steel. I forgot what its tensile strength is. But it's a ground, it's a ground screw, but it's not particularly hard. And I could have gone in with a brass nut, but what I did do is I went in with another dissimilar metal, cast iron. And cast iron is a lot harder than the steel screw. So the steel screw will eventually seat into that nut and work out better. But Great, great, great question. We have one from Randy Richard. And this was on the third video. And I had a lot of comments about me gluing the new nut into the old casting. And I use super glue. And a lot of people are very concerned about me using super glue. And Randy Richard from Randy Richard in the shop left me a comment that I just want to, I'm going to read the opening statement, then I'll kind of paraphrase the rest of it. Okay, I'll try to be positive. You know, when you're trying to be positive, you know what's going to happen here? This, Randy is going to school me. <laughs> but I have to say, I know Randy, he does not have a mean bone in his body. I don't even think he has a mean cell in his body. And he's got the experience as a machinist for I, don't, I can't remember how many years. So 
what he says, I have to listen to because he does have a lot more experience than me. He starts out with, this is a great idea. The lead screw on a surface grinder has very little axial force on it and CA glue, super glue, should work quite well. I would not suggest doing this on a lathe. The axial forces are far greater. And he's right. And what he's talking about is, on the surface grinder, this goes in and out. There's hardly any force. But on a lathe like that, you can put a lot of force on that screw. And eventually, that um, nut would probably come loose, is what he's saying. Now, I want to address why I use super glue. So it's, it's kind of a secret. I want you guys to come in here a little closer. The reason I used super glue over anything else is it's all I have in the shop. <laughs> um, Loctite would probably work a lot better, but super glue is all I have in the shop. And sometimes you just got to go with the flow, and that's what I did. Now, like I said, some people suggested using um, Loctite. Some people talked about using epoxy. And I want to talk about epoxy really quick. Epoxy is a fabulous glue, and there's so many different types of it. One of its challenges is it's very thick. So what I would have had to do when I milled that part down, I would have had to give it more tolerance to allow the glue in there. So it would have had to have been a lot sloppier fit. And what I'm worried about on a sloppier fit is that when I would have glued it in, it would have been twisted one way or another and caused me problems later when trying to fit it into the machine. So that's why I didn't use epoxy. Now for some of the fun comments. You know, at the end of my videos, I always ask for positive comments, and I do that for a multitude of reasons. Um, mostly is when people leave negative comments, they feel bad about themselves. I want you to look at my videos and other people's videos and look at them in a positive way. We put a lot of work into these videos. I put about 10 to 20 hours a week into producing videos that you guys get to enjoy. And Every hour I work on videos is one less hour I get to put in the shop. And that's the same thing with all of us guys. And we want you to appreciate what we do. To come in with negative comments, to tear us down, to make yourselves feel good, is just sad. So I want you guys to leave positive, upbeat comments. Not as much for me, which I do appreciate them, and I know all the other YouTube guys appreciate them too, but to also Lift yourself up and see the positive of what happened in those videos that you just watched. Here's one from the Texas Gun Guy. When you say positive comments, do you mean life affirming, you are a great human being, or damn, that's some real good work? Well, here's my reply. Both of those are a good start. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Love that one. That one's fun. Let's see from George Ray. You have a great style of communication and your video work is very well done. This channel is a keeper. George, thank you. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So there we go, guys. Just some fun comments. Uh, I really loved those questions and I try to get back to you guys as much as I can. But I will be honest, there's a lot of information coming into my computer every day and I do lose things. I, so I do apologize to you guys. But I hope you will appreciate at least my efforts. So there's a lot of us guys out there doing YouTube videos. And I want to introduce you to a new one, Jim Bollinger. He's got one called Do Right Fabrication. And he does some fabulous work. He actually just built an X-Wing fighter for his son as a costume for Halloween. That is fantastic. Great video. And I'll have a link down below this so you can check out his channel. He does a lot of welding, developing some machinery stuff, a channel that you definitely want to check out. Don't forget to leave some positive comments. Give me some thumbs up. And also, when you subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, there's an additional button down there that if you click on that, you will get notifications when a new video comes out. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.
Okay, this is a special part of the video I'm saving just for you guys that are cool enough to hold out till the end of the credits. I'm going to show you how well the handle works. We come down here. This is the screw we just replaced. And all the way in here should be where it would bind if it would bind at all, because that's where the bearing is and the nut is right behind it. So the threaded portion is really close together. And if we were to have a problem, that's where it would show it. And as you can see, it's just as smooth as can be. All right, cool guys. Now go out in the shop, build something cool. Thanks.